the east bank of the Cumberland River and across the water from the Tennessee State Capitol building, there's a look at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. This crowd here fired up for football as a moment ago their Titans were introduced. This should be a good one as the Titans get set to match up. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. For the Pittsburgh Steelers right now at 2-0, and and despite the 2-0 and start, you know, the offense hasn't really shown consistency through four quarters of football, getting Big Ben back into the fold, but again, still 2-0. and Now, rookie Chase Claypool in Week 2, he caught the longest touchdown pass thrown by Roethlisberger since way back Week 12 of 2018, an 84-yard reception, and also also in that win over Denver in week two, Big Ben Charles, he passed Eli Manning for seventh on the all-time passing yards list. And Big Ben has passed his classmate because they were in the same draft together, Eli Manning, for some big numbers over the first two weeks of the season. And how about the running game? They're starting to get it going. In the season opener, James Conner got hurt. And guess what? Benny Snell filled in and had over 100 yards against the Giants. In this game, James Conner bounced back. He had a 100-yard game. But we both know the strength of this team is the defense. And as they like to say, the strength of the pack is the wolf. And they've got a ton of wolves on that defense. And the strength of the wolf is the pack. And you know they play really hard together. This is a team that near the top in sacks and yardage allowed. How about this now? Home next week against 0-2 Houston. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Jadevian Clowney showing the explosiveness on the sack. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. On fourth down, on is Dustin Colquitt to kick this away. Back deep, Khalif Raymond. This is fielded at the 27. And that'll be a return of 12 following a very nice punt. And it'll be Titan football. But Charles, the Tennessee Titans, as they come back out here on offense, this is a team right now 2-0. And it hasn't been an easy start, but still 2-0. A late win in Denver by two, and then they got by the Jaguars on a late field goal this past week. Seven straight wins for the Titans now over the Jags, and Ryan Tannehill showing last season was not a fluke. He threw four touchdown passes in the victory, and the team's 2-0 start, by the way. First time they've done that since 2008. And that's not coincidentally the last time that the Titans won the AFC South was when they went 2-0 in 2008. I think this is a team that everyone has to say, okay, it wasn't just a lucky run to the AFC Championship game last year. This is a good team. And if they got consistent field goal kicking, I'm not so sure that these games would have been as close in the first two outings for them. And next they'll go to Minnesota, who's had a tough start, 0-2. And then they'll be home for a month with Pittsburgh, Buffalo, and Houston coming to town before their open week in Week 7. A first down carry for Henry. Stephon Tewitt, the one that got him down. Taking the quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Brings up second and five. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. Yard on the play. Brings up third and four. And defensively going with a dime set. Six DBs on third and four. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Tannehill finding Davis for a Titan first down. 
Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down at distance count. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. Relatively small sample size, but that's his longest run of the first quarter. Bounced it out to the outside to make it successful. And to get there, you actually need some help. It's not just your pure speed getting to the corner, making sure that the blocking is taken care of inside so the pursuit doesn't get you. And oftentimes, those wide receivers, tight ends, that might be flexed out, they've got to control the edge and make sure no one from the outside can spill the play before he gets there. Second and goal. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Try to punch it in with Henry. And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Titans have taken a first quarter lead. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turning to his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym, preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Taking it about the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver. But it's going to be second down. So many times we see teams go on the road and want to lean on their running game, but this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. They'll run with the NC State man. It's Jalen Samuels. And he powers his way up past the 30. Five yards. Now it's third and five. All right, Brand. I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Got an open man. It's Washington. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. James Washington. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. First down. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag. That guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. He gets this one to Johnson. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Good catch by Deontay Johnson, and he really helped fill a void during his rookie season when he had 59 catches that led the team, and he was first among all rookie receivers last season as well. Not bad for the 10th wide receiver selected in the 2019 draft. 
Really good play. Expects to continue to get better in this Pittsburgh offense. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. First down run for Connor. Not going to get much. Maybe a yard. Second down. The tackle made no doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback. They also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Complete. It's Johnson. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Deontay Johnson. A seven-yard gain on the play. And it's third down. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. They'll try and run for it with counter. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Got what he needed for the first down with a gain of two. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. They go draw play. This is Samuels. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. On second and 11 now. Roethlisberger, his throw incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. A 56-yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. Uh, they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say, when you run in the big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 46. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. After the penalty, it's Henry. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Let's go. 
Now on second and 16, Tannehill. It's caught, Smith. Tannehill's pass. Completely. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. The Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Out of the gun, Tannehill. Eluding the pressure right. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Titans seven, Steelers nothing. Last year's All-Pro punter Brett Kern comes on for Tennessee, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out. And by a few inches, that'll be a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Ebron caught left side. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. They'll contain him to just four, second down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight, doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. James Washington was the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Open man, Smith-Schuster. It's complete. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Juju Smith Schuster. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. And the Steelers. There's a catch by Juju Smith Schuster, and he's hoping there's plenty more of that coming. 2019, not the year he expected. Lost his quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, early. Dealt with a knee injury and missed four games, and his stats really fell. Just 552 yards through the air. But in 2018, what a big year he had then with Big Ben. 1,426 yards. He's hoping that the return of form of Roethlisberger leads to the return of form of himself. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. They'll try a little trickery here on the end around. I don't think anyone in the building fooled right there as that one is going to blow up in their faces. They'll wind up losing seven yards on the play. And it'll be third and ten now. Now it's Roethlisberger. And the Titan defense steps up here, and down he goes. It's Jeffrey Simmons that time who got in to record the sack. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing. The O-line coach will. Call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. At their own. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. 
You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. We'll watch that leverage on this drive. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. A gain of two. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. It's caught. Michael Brillen. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a first down on a gain of 10. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. They'll run on first down. Henry. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Tackle me. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. From just shy of midfield, Tannehill, and his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver there was Jonu Smith, and it's third down. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. From the gun, here's Tannehill. Complete. Smith has it. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Eight yards, first down as they're able to convert. The 43-yard line. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Devin Bush, the Steelers' leading tackler as a rookie last year, gets another there. Brings up second. Ben, and all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. From the 41, Tannehill. He's got Smith here. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. The Titans on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. Tannehill, he finds Humphreys. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll run the jet sweep with Brown. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Ball carrier. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. One-yard gain. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion, and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. On second and nine, Tannehill. This one caught by Davis. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 17-yard line. Give them 14 on that one and a first down. The 17-yard line. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the red zone now, Tannehill. Looking sideline, incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Tannehill. That's complete to his tight end, Ferkser. 
And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Five yards. Now it's third and five. It's a gain of I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Already a pair of third down conversions for them on this drive, but right now they need five yards on this third down try. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Nice play on the ball by A.J. Brown, and he comes up with the reception. He had a terrific 2019 as a rookie. The first one since 1970 to go over 1,000 yards receiving and average over 20 yards per catch. They'll try and run for it with Henry. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Derrick Henry with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Titans are able to extend their lead. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And it'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. Koskowski now after the touchdown he'll send this one away and able to get this out to the 25 Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field and they're in a bind early here down 14 nothing are you worried at this stage or still too early you're worried you're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team you want to make sure that they stay positive but at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Now the pass finding its way into the hands of Eric Ebron, and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Good catch there by Eric Ebron, and the Steelers are hoping that they see the 2018 version of this young man. 66 catch, 750 yards, and 13 touchdowns, and that was good enough for second in the league with the Indianapolis Colts. The Steelers like to throw to the tight end. They hope Ebron is the guy. Complete to Washington. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A good pick up there of 20 yards. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. To throw here, Roethlisberger. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 20 yards on both of those plays back-to-back -back there. They are moving now. It's another first down. Here we go, here we go. Blue 30. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And this is caught. 
at the eight. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target, but it'll be second and goal. We've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byer. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Titans take over first. After the interception, here's Tannehill. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver that time, Adam Humphreys. And now it's second down. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but if they make them out of bounds, that does you no good. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. A give to Henry. And he's able to get him a small cushion before being taken down at the five, a gain of three. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone. They need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. From his goal line here, Tannehill. It's caught. Humphreys. And he is going to have the first down as he's up to his own 13-yard line. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. This will be caught by Brown. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two to A.J. Brown. Eight yards on the pickup brings up second and two at the 21-yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. The final shot here before the break, Tannehill. And now he lost the football. Tannehill loses it, and it's picked up by the Steelers. But they will not be able to capitalize as time has run out here on the first half of play. So we come upon halftime with our score 14 to nothing. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, a two-touchdown game, 14-0 to score as we get rolling again here in this second half. And it'll come out to the 25 as Raymond will elect not to bring it out. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll set up to throw. He gets it to Humphreys. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Brandon, the perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. first and now we get into the psychology of the whole thing, because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another first down as he went right back to the same well, this time for 17 yards. 
first half. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. Tannehill with a throw caught by Brown. Yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. First down. And another thing that makes a comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Steven Nelson. Well, Charles, you know, glancing back to week two of the NFL, certainly there were a lot of great games. Unfortunately, though, it was a tough day for injuries across the league, and the team probably hit the hardest, the 49ers, losing Nick Bosa and Solomon Thomas for the season. They also had Jimmy Garoppolo, Raheem Mostert also leaving that game, but they were certainly not the only team affected. And remember, they were already missing George Kittle, Debo Samuel, right? Those guys didn't even play in that ball game. So this is a team of oh, Richard Sherman, of course, is on IR. They've really struggled in the early going. How about the Giants losing the face of their team? And Saquon Barkley looks like an ACL gone for the season. And Cortland Sutton also done for the season with an ACL with the Denver Broncos. Tough, tough sledding right now. Remember, Drew Locke, the quarterback, also hurt his shoulder in the, in the last ball game. And then Christian McCaffrey, they're saying likely at least a month for him of being out with that high ankle sprain. I guess maybe, CD, this is a good year to have just that three-week IR rather than the longer spell. It certainly is. And when you can have guys who can return faster for you and you know that, that really helps the team out in a big way. Unfortunately for the Colts, from the first round pick in safety, starting safety for them, Malik Hooker, the IR won't apply. He's gone for the season with a torn Achilles. Here's Dustin Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. Forty-two yards on the punt, just two on the return. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Remember, call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. T.J. Watt, his second sack of the night. There's a familiar sight, T.J. Watt with a sack. And remember last year, he was in the running for Defensive Player of the Year, and he earned it because he's been the top 10 in the league in sacks for two straight seasons. Really, really difficult to block coming off the edge. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And that is incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Here's Brett Kern now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 24. He'll set up to throw from the gun. And it's complete. He gets this one to Washington. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. It's a gain of eight. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, 
can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. Four yards to pick up, first down. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Washington's got it. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Brings up Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Yard to go. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Out of the shotgun, they'll run with Connor. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Third down turns to first with that five-yard pickup. A good carry and a first down by James Connor. And this Pittsburgh team is really hoping he's back in form because last year the entire Pittsburgh offense suffered without Ben Roethlisberger, quarterback. James Conner, only 715 combined yards, but in 2018, he was a Pro Bowl running back. Combined yardage that year, 1,470. They're hoping for 2018 James Conner in 2020. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. And there's James Conner showing his versatility with a nice reception and first down pickup out of the backfield. Three years into his pro career, though, he hasn't played a full season, so they want to see durability increase for him. But during his Pro Bowl year in 2018, that's and he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Jack Crawford credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, you know, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, that allows your blitzers to get there. Five yards on the play, and it's third down. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. But look what we have here, a sustained drive, and that was certainly a wall in the first half. They really struggled to try and move the football. But right now, they certainly seem to have the formula working. Let's see if they can keep it up. On first down, it's Samuels. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Ball on the eight. It's second and four. Now it's Roethlisberger. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. What a job by this defense all game long. They've come together and really said, no one's crossing our goal line, and they're definitely not going to start right now. You can just see the dejection. Feel like nothing is working offensively. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Fourth down now as the Titans defense holds up in coverage. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. 
And Boswell's kick is good. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14 to 3. Steelers. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you'll see a lot of guys sag and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And this will make it into the end zone. And it'll come out to the 25 as Raymond will elect not to bring it out. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. The third quarter has not been kind to them. After they built that lead at intermission, they've seen that lead shrink. And how much of that is simply execution? How much of that is maybe you lose your edge a little bit because you've got a lead? And you do have to credit the other team some because they've made some adjustments to start to slow them down. Can they find those counters now? Those extra plays or plays they haven't run that'll be effective and get them back moving again. They'll be looking for something here, anything to seize that momentum back. Hey, CD, let's peer ahead to week three on the NFL slate. I'm looking down at the schedule here, seeing what catches my eye. How about the Rams at Buffalo? That's a pretty good game. A couple of 2-0 and teams. Dallas at Seattle. What else do you have? Well, how about Green Bay at New Orleans on Sunday night? We always talk about quarterback matchups that we'd love to see more of. You don't get to see very often Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees, and this could be the last time if Drew Brees indeed hits towards retirement after this season. And how about the one that's going to cap off the weekend? Kansas City at Baltimore. Oh, yeah. I mean, how big is that one, right? Because there are a number of us who think that this is a preview of the AFC Championship game. But I want to go back to one you mentioned, the Rams and Buffalo. Two quarterbacks that continue to have to prove their greatness or even that they should have the job. Jared Goff with the Rams and, and of course, Josh Allen with Buffalo. Both of them off to really hot starts and looking good. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Got a man, it's Brown. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost. And now he lost the football. Tannehill loses it. Ryan Tannehill sack. When that ball popped free, we could hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone to the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on it. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the right huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. On is Kern, the punter, to send this one away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 right at the 30. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. And his throw is incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. And that'll bring up second down. Well, CD, unfortunately, some somber news across the league in week two coming from New England Patriots running back James White because his parents were in a car crash and his father, Tyrone, captain of the Miami-Dade Police Department, passed away in that accident. And his mother, Lisa, also sustained critical injuries. So it was obviously a tough one. James White did not play in the game on Sunday, but we did see the outpouring of support from around the National Football League and how this really is one big family. Yeah, he was really embraced, as you mentioned, by the National Football League. We saw 
social posts from plenty of players around the world, including Tom Brady, former teammate of his with the New England Patriots. We saw it outpouring in terms of, you know, other guys around the league, J.J. Watt, who played with him in college at Wisconsin. And not only that, how about his own teammates? Devin McCourty scored a touchdown against Seattle and ran up and told the camera, hey, 2-8, we're thinking about you, we love you. And the rest of the guys chimed in from there. And the Patriots organization offered to fly him home on the private jet. He stayed with his team, stayed in their embrace, and now he has to go and face the difficult task of saying goodbye to his dad and tending to his mom. But he's got plenty of support from around the league, from the Patriots, and of course his own family. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger setting up the screen. This is Samuels, and he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really onto something there. In this passing game, they just can't get off the ground. In that play, they wound up losing yardage. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Again, it's Roethlisberger. Ebron with it over the middle. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? The offense on third down today, they've converted six times and could use a seventh here. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A gain of one yard. Just enough to get the first down there with a one-yard pickup. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid gain. From the 35, back to work on second and four. Ben to throw again. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Juju Smith-Schuster, 35 yards. And the Steelers are able to make this a close game again. And on that one, able to catch it, also able to have the wherewithal to take it in for the score. And how about the phases of a successful catch and a completion of a play? Look the ball in, secure the catch, and then, of course, the run after the catch that ends up in the end zone. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call, and he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion, and now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Chris Boswell to kick Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Here's Khalif Raymond to return. 
And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Out come the Titans now. And now they'll look to answer working from behind. And remember, this offense has sputtered yet to score here in the second half. They'll need to change that here. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at the 31-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Just second and ten. A lot of times, it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and ten. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And the grab made by the tight end, Pruitt. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. The 43 yard line. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Tannehill on first down. And this one complete to Smith. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Again, Tannehill. He's got it complete, Derrick Henry. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. That was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Take it there to make the tackle, Steven Nelson. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? You just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. And this will be caught by Brown. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Tannehill to his top target, Brown, for a Tennessee first. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way and worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Tannehill getting it out quickly to Brown. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Second and three at the 27-yard line. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. And a busy night for Henry continues. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a first down on a gain of 10. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Now left side on the swing pass. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Now the Titans were number one in the NFL in red zone touchdown percentage last year, 77%. It's first and goal. 
And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. The safety Terrell Edmonds picks it. And he'll take it all the way up near the 30-yard line. By the Steelers. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. And he'll throw right away. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. To throw again on second down, Roethlisberger. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Roethlisberger's pass intercepted. On first down, it's Henry, and they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Over the middle. It's incomplete. And now offensively, it's third and ten. And I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. From the gun on third down, Tannehill. The open man is Smith. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 17 yards on that play for the Titans. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. They'll run on first down. Henry. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Good game there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. The Titans were number one in the NFL in red zone touchdown percentage last year, 77%. It's first and goal. Back to the ground now. It's Henry. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. Oh, Brandon, I'm going to tell you, this is football time to me. They're inside the 10-yard line. That's like drawing the line in the sand. Who's going to make the stand here? Defensive guys, they know if he gets in the end zone, this ball game is over. And the guys with the football right now, they're thinking, let's just pound it in there. Got to hold him to three to keep this a one-score game. A line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. They'll give Henry another shot. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Here's Henry. 
And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause of the action. A timeout here defensively. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hand, should be a fairly easy one here. And the 14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So big bet in the Steelers now. Down by six, a minute 46 to go. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. That gets them the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. First down. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now it's Roethlisberger. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He's unable to complete it there. And just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is it just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Roethlisberger going to get that to Ebron. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 11 yards there, first down. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got to hustle. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it. But they've got to continue to move quickly. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Here's Roethlisberger. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Clock now under 30 ticks and running. Throwing now is Roethlisberger. Got an open man. It's McLeod. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. They'll contain him to just four, second down. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. They may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Back to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. Now the Steelers going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. Intended for Deontay Johnson. Incomplete. It's now fourth down. Yeah. 
So down six, and they know they need this one on fourth down. They're going on fourth down. It's Roethlisberger. He's going to let it fly. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And as a result, it'll be Titan football on the turnover on downs. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Tannehill to a knee, and that ought to be the final act of this ball game. So this one, a Tennessee Titan victory, and they were really helped by their defense, forcing three turnovers. I think what we saw in this one, today's defense. And what I mean by that is in the old days, pitching shutouts was big time. That was paramount. But the big thing was holding people down, holding down their yardage, right? Don't let them throw the ball through the air and gain a lot of... But now, it's about taking the ball away taking away possessions, getting the ball back for their offense. They had three takeaways in this one, and it led them to victory. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Titans are winners here as we say so long from Nashville.